It's been kind of a rough year for the backyard ski slope. We haven't gotten much snow and it's starting to get pretty thin in spots. So it's time to take matters into my own hands. We'll do a little chamfer on here, try to make it look kind of legit. The other piece of this is pretty much the same, except on this end it's getting a connection for a pressure washer hose. You could cobble this whole thing together out of plumbing fittings from the hardware store, but I have a quasi-rational pet peeve about doing that sort of thing. If I can, I would rather do it in the minimum number of pieces. And this is just a straight M22 thread, then I'm going to ream a 14 millimeter hole down the middle of it. And since this is a metric thread, I need my metric transposing gear. This is a 37 tooth gear and a 47 tooth gear. And since they only ever get used together, I pin them together, put a bronze bushing in there. That just slips right on the stud there. See, I can work in metric. I just need to leave the half ton engaged. All put together and that's all there is to it. I've got a needle valve in the middle. I kind of misjudged the length of these nipples. These should be about four inches apart. It's closer to six. I can swap these out later, but I'll give it a shot for now. This is all subject to revision. So, high pressure line coming in from the pressure washer. That goes out this nozzle. And then we have for pressurized air, a garden hose. Why a garden hose? This is a good jumping off point to talk some of the thermodynamics involved here. When you compress air, it heats up in the compressor, and then when it gets into the tank and into the air lines, it cools down. When that happens, as most people that have shop air systems know, water condenses out of it, which is why you end up needing water traps and that sort of thing on your system. If you're outside in freezing temperatures with a small air hose like this one, that condensation will freeze pretty quickly and build up and block the air line. So, use a bigger hose. This has a burst rating of 600 PSI, so putting 90 PSI of air through it shouldn't be a problem. Now when the air comes out of the hose and the pressure drops, the opposite happens. Anyone who's done that knows that air is nice and cool, and you get some evaporative cooling, and we're going to use that to our advantage here too. If we only sprayed high pressure water out, it would probably super cool without freezing until it hit something like the ground, in which case instead of making snow, we're going to make an icy mess. So what we want to do is run a little bit of that high pressure water 
into our airstream, which is what this needle valve controls. It hits this airstream, which cools very, very rapidly to a very low temperature. Very fine mist will freeze. Those ice crystals will be the nuclei that mix in with the other water stream and make the snow. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. Temperature is hovering just about zero Fahrenheit, which for those that want things in SI units, that works out to about 225 Kelvin. It's a really good temperature for snowmaking. My goal with this was to do some sort of spot resurfacing, cover up some of the rocks, and so far it's doing a pretty good job with that. To see just how much snow this would make, I reset it, let it run all night, probably about 11 hours, and made a decent sized pile of snow. And so of course the real test is how old the ski... Okay, so that works. So there you go, pretty basic little snow gun. I'm obviously not gonna be covering the entire yard with this thing, but for just kind of spot resurfacing, building some jumps, filling in some of the spots that are slow to fill in, I think that's gonna be pretty effective. I'm using this old electric power washer I have, it's 1.3 gallons per minute. And so the bulk nozzle is sized based on the flow rate of the pressure washer you're using and the pressure that you're targeting. I'll leave a link below for the calculator for figuring out the nozzle size. I was shooting for about 700 PSI, which is sort of a good general pressure for just getting your feet wet, getting started snowmaking. Though if you're getting your feet wet, you're probably doing something wrong. In this case, it worked out to be a number three orifice, which is the last two numbers on the nozzle. The first two are the angle, so it's a 40 degree number three orifice. For the nucleation nozzle, the nuke, you want a wider angle, so this is a 65. And then for the size of the orifice, you basically take the CFM of your air compressor and round it down. Mine's 5.5 CFM at 90 PSI. Uh, so round that down to 5 and get a 6505. One thing that I am going to change on this is to add a check valve on the airline to keep water from working its way back down the air hose and freezing because I was having some icing issues. But other than that, that works pretty well. And as these things go, the day after I fired this thing up, we got nine inches of snow. So it works exactly how I planned it.